In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace a parking brake cable on a RAV4 located underneath going to the rear wheels. 21 millimeter socket and we are going to remove the tire. Now we can pull the tire off. So we're going to remove our caliper, but I'm going to do it just from the bracket to the knuckle, leave the caliper intact. So with a 17 millimeter socket, I'm going to break these mounting bolts free. Get the bottom one before that completely comes out. Let's get that bottom one out the rest of the way. Now I'm going to use a caliper hook and I'm going to hang that, set it out of the way. Now we can remove our rotor and see those parking brake shoes. So you notice how this tool has these, this hook on it opening on both ends. That is for brake springs. Now if I put it in like that and installed it, it would be clockwise. Counterclockwise is to remove the spring. See how it pulls it right off the hook? And there it is. We're going to do the same over here. Move that hub so the opening is right there. And put the tool right in there and turn count. This one would be clockwise. We're going to follow right down to where the springs are that hold it in place. I'm going to get a pair of long needle nose and I'm going to push and turn that pivot so that it's in the open slot. Take those out, and then there's one on the other side at 9 o'clock. Now the other side top spring fell out, but what I always do no matter what, I've been doing this for a long time, I still set up the springs the way they were set up in the brakes away from the car. So I'll take that top spring and I'm going to set it at right around 1, 2 o'clock. And I'm going to take the one on this side, set it the same, around 11. Now I'm going to take my center spring out. I do have new hardware, but it's just a good habit so you don't say, oh man, which spring went where again? Because they are different designs. Now we can take this top shoe away from the top notch. So do the same on the back and let that down. Now you'll notice the adjuster and the spring that holds the bottom shoes together. Good way to get that out is to turn it just like that take the adjuster out, making sure you know what side you just took off. So the threaded side is to the rear of the vehicle and that does matter because this will spin and adjust the parking brakes and if it's in reverse it'll de-adjust the parking brake so it'll never be properly adjusted. So pay attention to how that adjuster comes out. We know that the studded thread is to the rear of the car. And the spring goes on the bottom. So now on this particular make and model, there is not that typical horseshoe clip that you see going on there. There's nothing. You're just going to pull that off and clean it up after. One other thing you want to take out and keep an eye on how it came out is this actual upper adjuster. It's a spacer and you'll see one side's wider than the other and one single slot here. This is this way for a particular reason and you want it on the rear shoe, facing the rear shoe and the hub. See how the cutout for the axle, it's got that roundness to it. So that's the way it would go in. Particularly wider opening goes to the rear. We'll set that aside. 
We're going to remove the pins because they're old and rusty and I am replacing the hardware. So they just slide out through the back of the backing plate. And we'll just measure them, make sure they're the same length, there was no front or back, set them aside. So now I'm going to take this bracket off the parking brake cable. So the best way I know how is if you have two pairs of cutters, it works, but you're not going to squeeze hard enough to cut anything. So you just want to like give it a space. Now I don't have two pairs right here, so I'm going to use a fuel line tool that I have, but it's shaped like a V. I want to get that so I can get this in there, slide that out, just like that, then release it. Now we're going to move on to taking the mounting of this cable from the backing plate and just the support bracket to this arm off. 10 millimeter socket, I'm going to grab it and just see if we can, don't forget to move the hub so it opens up and get your tool in there. Nice, there's one. And then follow the cable down to where it mounts, right here, 10 millimeter socket. Now we can grab that cable. You might need to get a little brass punch and a hammer. Oh, I got it. Just pull it right out of that backing plate and let it hang down. Now we can bring that parking brake cable right through the back of the backing plate. Line up that housing. Fits right in that slot. Take that little six millimeter bolt, start it by hand. I'm going to go right to the bracket and mount that bracket. Put the bolt through. Get a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to snug them up. And I'm going to go over here to the housing. So line that cutout on that hub so you can put a socket in there, 10 millimeter. Just tighten it down. So now we're going to clean up that backing plate. I'm just going to take a little wire wheel brush, clean off the marking high points. You can't miss the high points. They're like little divots that the shoes will ride on. And I'm cleaning them up because I'm going to put a little bit of caliper grease on them for the rubbing part. Just get a little break. Parts cleaner. Clean it up. I have my catch basin below. Okay, we'll let that dry a little bit. Make sure it's dry. We're gonna take some caliper grease, like I said. I'm just gonna brush it on those high points. It just stops the shoes from being metal to metal against the backing plate. It could make a horrific noise. Plus it will wear that backing plate out. Then you'll have to replace that. We're gonna put our adjuster arm in. Remember when we took it out, we put the Y part towards the rear of the car. I'm just going to let it sit right in there, right on that little hub. Now I'm going to take my new adjuster. Two came in the package. So like I talked about earlier, you have different thread turning. You have clockwise and counterclockwise. And that's for the meaning of whether the shoe gets adjusted or de-adjusted. So I matched up the new adjuster to the one that I took out on this side and I'm going to put some never sees on the threads part so that way we'll have no problem in the future. Just take a little spray can or you can have the paste and I like to put it on the inside where the threads are. Now I can thread that back in. Bring it in as far as you need to. Take some of that excess. And I'm gonna put that on this side. Spray a little bit in there. Because the head of that adjuster needs to spin freely too. Make sure it never seizes up on anyone. Now that's ready to go when we get to that point. Let's install the actual parking brake lever in that cable. Now before we pull that cable back, if you could be gentle with a pair of cutters because you don't want to damage the cable, 
fray it in any way. Pull that spring back as much as you can. What I do now is I'll just grab another pair of pliers, hold it, pull. And just gently hold that pressure on that so you can get that lever in. Now we know that it goes in the back, so it goes that way. Then let go. So when it comes to parking brakes, unlike regular drum brakes, there is no primary or secondary brake shoe. That usually means one shoe is longer than the other, but these are all equal, so there's no front or back. So we're going to just grab one of them and get ready to put that e-brake pivot on. And I'm going to, right where it sits in there, I'm going to put some nice caliper grease to get that to stay spinning freely. I'm going to rest it the best I can while I get the rest of the hardware. Well, I'm going to have to hold it there and then take the pin and run the pin through the back. You can't miss the hole. It's right there, right by the actual caliper bracket mounting. Like that. Put your finger on it if you can. There we go. Now we have to put this spring and collapse it and turn that at the same time. Turn that just a little bit. I pried a pry bar in there to hold that pin. So now I can concentrate on the outside here and hope that I can get it by pushing down and spinning. Maybe give it a little bit of help. So now I'm going to go from that shoe and work my way around to the top to make it the easiest as possible. So remember the threaded part goes towards the rear and you're going to line it up in the shoe on that flat spot just like that and the same with the other shoe. But before we do that, I want to put the spring in. Remember the opening, the long part of that spring is going to go by that star adjuster. So this back part of the spring does not go in this hole, it goes in the slot. Now you grab your other shoe and the adjuster. First thing I do is I hook the spring up, put the lever in there. Now I just give it a pull and line it up. There we go. Go ahead and adjust that out. You want that spring to stay taut. Once again, let's line that hub up so it's less troublesome with the cutout right there. We're going to put this side, front side, pin in through the hole in the backing plate and right through the shoe like that. We'll get the spring. Line that up. Right? Yep. Once again, let's line that hub up so it's so now we can put our top springs on. You had the two different types. So now we can put our top springs on. You had the two different types. And I laid them out, so the weirdest looking one, if you want to call it that, goes to the rear. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, because they don't go over each other like some cars. Put it in that hole in the front there. And then I'm just going to grab my tool. You can use a screwdriver. I've seen people use many things. And it will fall right in.
just like that. Do the same to the back. Line it up in that hole. So now we can put our top springs on. You had the two different types and I laid them out. So the weirdest looking one, if you want to call it that, goes to the rear. It doesn't matter which order you put them in because they don't go over each other like some cars. Put it in that hole in the front there. And then I'm just going to... So now it's time to clean up the hub. I'm gonna put my catch basin below it. First I'm gonna clean off the grease that somebody added already in the last brake job. Even if yours is just rust, I recommend doing this just to get the rust loosened up because you want a clean surface. Then take a wire brush and just start brushing it. The idea is to get the high rise chunks, or if of anything, off because you don't want that hub sitting unevenly. And the most notorious spot is right here, the center part of that hub. And if you need to, you can always just grab your hand, feel for any rise rust spots. We're lucky this is pretty clean, and I'll take it. And I'll just clean it off again. Let that dry. So I'm going to spray the hub with some copper never sees. You can use the silver if you wish. It just stops that from rusting again. So now we can put our rotor back on. Make sure it sits. Make sure you can turn it. That's perfect. We'll adjust the parking shoes through this adjustment window once the caliper is back on. Now we can install our caliper. Take it off the hook. Line up the bracket. We have the two mounting bolts back here. Caliper bracket to knuckle. Start it by hand. That's a 17 millimeter socket. I'm going to take that and snug it up. Let's get the bottom one. And we're going to torque that to 65 foot pounds. That's the little door for the adjustment for the parking brakes. Take it out now so you don't forget and put it with parts so you remember to put it back on. If not, water will get in there and it makes a mess out of the hub and the parking shoes and that's not exactly the goal, is it? We're gonna take a flathead screwdriver or an adjustment tool. We're gonna go right in there and we're gonna adjust those parking brakes, the shoes that go inside this hat. And nice quick ways you want a nice drag. So at six o'clock is where the star adjuster is and you're gonna turn it. You'll feel it getting tighter or looser. If it's looser, then go the opposite way. And you want it to have a nice slow drag. Not too tight, just right. Then you're gonna put your boot back on. Now water won't get in there. And start your lug nuts. And now we'll take our 21 millimeter socket. We're not gonna really reef on them, we're just gonna bottom it out because we're gonna torque it to the factory specs. That one right there, the threads are stretched a little bit. That's from over tightening. We'll torque our wheels. That's with the 21 millimeter socket. And the wheel torque is 76 foot pounds. I'm gonna do it in a crisscross or star pattern. Double check. All 
remove your shifter knob, and by doing that, you're going to turn it counterclockwise. So just unscrew it, lift it up, and set it aside. Then we're going to move on to the parking brake handle. This whole boot cover is going to come up. Just grab firmly right here and give it a good pull up. Go all the way up to the front. Pull that out like that. There we go. Put that cable back down. Now we're going to remove the upper console panel. And this is another grabbing firmly and pulling up. And working your way around to the front. Now we can see that little indicator light. There's a clip over here on the back side. Squeeze and then lift it up out of the way. Now on the passenger floor, we're going to grab this front part of the panel. There's three clips, one here, here, and then one in the front. So I'm just going to grab firmly, see how it starts to separate. Just put your hand underneath there and pull. Set it aside. You're going to do the same thing to the driver's side. Now open up the lid to the compartment and inside you'll see a little piece of carpet. Lift that carpet up, set it aside. And now you have four mounting bolts. It's a 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to use an extension and remove them. So now we've moved to the front of the console and underneath this little square using a small pocket screwdriver you want to just pop this right up. Set it aside and you'll have one screw here and it's a Phillips head. We're going to remove that. Set it aside. Now we're going to remove this trim piece right here on the pocket screwdriver or a trim tool. I'm going to get right in there and pop the rivets out little plastic clips. Set that aside. Remove this screw. It's with a Phillips head. The last two screws on this little front console piece is right here. Phillips screw. So now you're just going to kind of like roughly handle this, give it a pull like that, grab the rear of the console and pull it out. And now we're going to remove this metal console bracket. And there's four mounting bolts on that with a 10 mil socket. Two in the front. And two in the back. You don't want to lose that in that carpet. You might find it, you might not. Now we can grab that bracket and pull up on it. So now with a 10 millimeter socket, I took my module and bracket and just laid it back down. I'm going to loosen up this nut right here. It's a double nut. And that's for safety so it doesn't come undone. And we're going to take the slack off that front cable for the parking brake. And then I'll take a deep 10 again. Move that up. I'm not going to take it completely out because I don't want to have to try to fish that back through. But I'm going to safely move that up. And I'm going to put my nut back on upside down so I don't lose it. Just like that. Now we could take our module, lift it up, set it aside. Now we have a snuff slack that we can pull this cable out. Move it over to that eyelet part and pull it out. Now we go underneath the vehicle and dismount the cable. So there's going to be four mounting bolts 
attached to the cable with a bracket in between. They were all gonna be a 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna start here at the wheel axle assembly and break that bolt free. Now you can follow that cable up and find the next bracket. So the cable goes up here, right above that drive shaft, and it's the little 10 millimeter socket size bolt. I'm gonna break that free. Take it right down. So now with another 10 millimeter socket, following that cable right up to this mid brace above the drive shaft. Go. I gotta get this socket out of there before I go down too far. I'm gonna get a swivel socket and continue. I'm gonna have to move over to quarter inch drive. So I moved over to quarter inch drive because of the thickness of that drive shaft in the way. one bracket here that you can just push that cable right out and then the last one is the one that goes into the floor so with a 10 mil socket we're gonna break this bolt free and because we've already detached the cable it's gonna fall right out come right down now we're gonna take our new cable I'm going to attach it through the floor first before I start putting all the brackets on. Get my 10 mil with my extension. Let's see if I can get this to line up. bracket sits flat, nice and flush with the floor. And I'm just going to snug it and work my way back. So we're going to line the cable into that plastic clip, snap it in, and work our way down. Bring the bracket, slide it on over, push that cable up so it keeps form. Line it up with that little cutout notch and get our bolt and start it by hand. I'm going to snug it up as much as I can so it doesn't fall down. That's that quarter inch socket. You're going to want to use that because of the drive shaft. Snug it up. Let's move on down to the next bracket. So now we're at the end of the drive shaft where that differential meets, and I'm going to pre-put my bolt in because it's kind of a twist. You've got to twist and push into place. And I'll get my socket ready. There we go. You see that little pin? It's going to go right in that spot. Snug it up, and last bracket's coming around the corner. Follow that cable around right here to that differential part. And we're going to line that pinhole in that square, put the bolt in, and start it. Snug it up. Now we're ready to torque all of the mounting bolts. 
So the mounting bracket torque for all of them go in the range from 53 to 71 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go right with 60 and be right in the middle. That one's tight. That one's good. The last one is where it goes into the floorboard, up into the console. So now we're back in the car and we're ready to attach our new cable to that front cable bracket. Just give it a twist, line it up, let that cable fall in place. It's going to go all the way through, there we go, and turn. So now we're going to take our console bracket with the module on it and rest it right back down where it goes. And I'm going to move right to this front cable. I want to snug it back up. So I'm going to take my top nut off that I put there for safety, deep 10 millimeter, and by hand, I'm going to snug it up. I want to see that cable go taut. So if I have to pull, hold my finger there, I'm going to feel the movement of it. Give it a little practice. Pull. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to put on the jam nut, which kind of locks it in place. And snug it up. With a 10 millimeter wrench, I'm going to put it right on that first bolt. Hold it there. Now I can snug that lock nut. Now we're ready to start assembling the console again. Those four mounting bolts with the 10 mil socket. Put the two front ones in first, and line them up. I'm gonna start everything before I snug it down. These are the tricky ones because we just definitely don't want to drop them in the carpet. And then one more on the other side. Now I'm going to get my electric drill and just snug them all up with a 10 mil socket. Now we're clear to install our center console again. Just bring it right over that shifter. Bring the nose part of it down. Nicely falls right back into place. We're going to get our hardware and start putting in the four screws in the front here. So you have four screws that go in the front of this console. The two with the big flat washers are gonna go in the front up here and the other two back here. So I'm just gonna start them by hand, put them in, see if I can get them to catch a little bit. Perfect. Do the same back here. These two might not be so easy. Just get my Phillips screwdriver and put them on in. Last one. Now I can put the four mounting bolts on that console bracket. 
definitely start them by hand. Make sure they're centered. You want the console to be pretty much lined up the way it should be. And this is going to be a 10 millimeter socket. Make sure it's lined up, like I said. Go ahead and tighten. Put that carpet in. There we go. So now we're clear to put the front half of our console together. I'm going to put that plate back in. Take note of this little tab right there. It's locked. There's a little cutout right here. So it goes in forward first, then push down, and it just clicks right in. So now we're going to put the tower trim piece in right here. Pay attention to this right here. So this lip is going to slide right underneath it. So start it like that. And then you can slide it, tilt it a little bit towards the driver's seat. Once you line everything up, push it in place. So now we're going to put our front trim in right by the passenger feet. So you have that point that's going to go right in that little pinch bracket. Feel that spot and push in on them. Two of them. And you got the same exact thing on the other side. Now we're going to put that major top piece on, the center console, and you have the actual where the shifter goes through. It does move, so we're in park at this point, so I'm going to put the hole towards the top. I'm going to tip it over. Remember, there's no screws. It's just all push pins. I'm going to take that line. This piece has to plug in right there. So I'm going to bring it in, I think, nose first, pop it through, clip it in, feel it click. Now you're going to drop this right down onto all the little push pins and then give it a good push. Make sure its trim is all down. It's nice and level. Looking good. Shut that latch. We don't need that open anymore. And now I'm going to get ready to put the parking brake cover on. So I'm looking at the parking brake and I can see that this piece is cut out at an angle there. So I'm going to push the handle through and then slide this right down over it. Line up the push stuff, little pins push down. I'm going to release my brake to make sure I don't get that leather all tucked underneath. There we go. Now we all we have to do is put our shifter knob back on. It's screwed on so it is once you dropped it down Start turning it clockwise. So right about here it stopped really hard. I don't want to over thread it, so I'm just going to turn it back so it's the right angle going straight. So now that we're all done, I'm going to pull up on my parking brake. Make sure it grabs nice and firm. If it feels like it's grabbing too high, feel free to go to the back wheels and adjust the parking brakes. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.